Mastercam 2023 has been released, but before you install it, I think you should watch this video and see what it has in store for you. So what I've got here is Mastercam 2022 overlaid onto Mastercam 2023, just so we can see any visual differences that there may be in this new release. And as you'll see here, as I go through some of these menus, everything is pretty much the same, and we're getting the odd new button added uh, here and there, depending on the menu tab that we're on. Now, this is to be expected. We always expect when they add new features to new versions, they're going to have to add a button here or change a prompt over there. But what we don't expect is when we see drastic changes. And here's what we're looking at inside of 2023 for the new mill group setup. So right away, we can see we've got some new stuff for 23. We've got a new interface on our menu group here, and we've also got a machine that's appeared on screen when we first hop into our machine group setup. So before we dive too far into this video, I'm going to say a few things about this. Um, this is my interpretation as to how this new machine group works. Things may change uh, going forward. I don't know the plan here. So if things do change, I'll link uh, a card or here or a link down over there or uh, odd add additional links to this video so you can go see the updated uh, use of this machine group. But for now, I'm using it as it works in the main first release of Mastercam 23. Okay, so let's go through this. What we see here in our new machine group setup is we've got tabs on the left side. We used to have three in the old version. Now we've got six and their naming has changed a little bit as well. So we've got one that's called machine. And this is the same as our files tab we had previously in 2022. The difference here being that we have access to our program number as well as our line numbering for our NC code. Now, as far as similarities go on this new interface, we can hop down to the tools tab. And this one is somewhat similar to the 22 interface as well. The main difference here is we can see tools that are currently in uh, the active file. Now, everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. So we've got a tab here for master model. This is where we define what our master model is, what it is we want to machine. We've also got a page here for stock setup. Unfortunately, we've lost a few of the old stock setup methods, and we're going to spend a little bit of time here in a second. And we've got a page here for work holding, uh, also known as fixtures. And then finally down at the bottom is where we can pick a machine for simulation. So for the most part, these, these concepts about stock fixtures, a machine for simulation are not new in Mashcam. They used to live in different places and now they've been brought into this interface. Uh, but the thing is, at this time, these settings within the machine group setup don't transport out into those areas in Mastercam. So right now, if you go and say define fixtures or define a specific machine you want to use for machine simulation, you will still have to go out into the interfaces you've used previous to define these machines and set your uh, stock definitions, select your fixtures and select your machine setup. So my understanding, or at least my thought is that this stuff will eventually get hooked up so that when you make these settings within the machine group, they do export out into Mastercam. So you're not making these uh, settings twice. Uh, so for now, for the most part, you can just ignore them within the machine uh, within, within this new machine group settings. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the process of setting up a part using this new machine group setup. And I'm going to go through two examples, one using a part, let me just turn on my gnomon here for origin, one using a part that's aligned to our, our default top WCS. And I'll also go through one quickly using uh, a same part that's off using its custom plane. Now there's a few things you need to know about this. Uh, again, I don't know if these are new intended functionality within Mastercam, um, things that we need to change the way we do things, or if it's just uh, something that's not working quite correctly yet. So uh, have a look at these two examples, uh, just so you're prepared for when you hop into Mastercam 23. So let's first go through a quick demo using the part that is aligned to our top WCS. Okay, so here's our setup. I've got a part, I've got it mounted into a vise, um, which is gonna be our fixture. And what I'm going to do here is hop into the very top of our machine group properties, which is the files, which brings us into the top machine tab of this uh, machine group setup. So currently right now, you can see I've got some machine here and 
I might not have this machine as something in my, my repertoire of machines to use. Now again, we can go ahead and change the machine that pops up down in the very bottom tab, which is simulation. You can use the pull down to select a machine. But again, this is not going to propagate out into Mastercam. Uh, so you'll have to do this setting twice right now. But to future proof yourself, uh, you might want to make the correct selection inside of this machine group setup uh, as well. So I'll just go ahead and pick uh, our normal default uh, VMC with nothing on top of it. So now I'm going to head back up to the very, very top, just because that machine was kind of distracting there, seeing that incorrect machine as we get started. And the first option to select here is master model. A master model in the past, we haven't had to define one. And my assumption as to what's going on with master model is this is going to be used in uh, collision detection within simulation, maybe within toolpath somewhere as well. Um, but in the past, all we've done is we've had our model up on screen and Mashcam was able to detect that that was our part and it would do its uh, compares within verify when we asked it to without doing any model selection. So now we can go ahead and pick the model here. So we've got an option here to add from selection, head out into our graphic screen, select our model and selection. Uh, there we go, we've got it selected. And you can even do some highlighting here so you can tell what you've picked and what you haven't picked. Uh, we can enable those two so you can see what is purple, a master model, and what is gray, uh, not a master model. Down here, we've got some options here to define the material for this master model. Now, here's where we uh, get a, a little bit of a disconnect between th the way things used to work in our machine group setup. So when we picked our stock before, it would be used or it could be used for things like speed and feed calculation. Uh, currently now, this is only set up for information about the material itself. And let me just jump ahead down to our tools tab for a second here, where our feed calculation, a lot of the times users would go and choose from material. If you want to use from material, uh, your material selection will be done out on the machine tab and in this material option over here. So we have to exit out of our machine group setup now and go and do our material selection and any speeds and feeds editing over there. Okay, so hopefully that gets tied back into this machine group setup, but for now that's how we have to deal with that. Carrying on down into stock setup. Now this is the tricky one here. Uh, this is a big, big change for 23. The only option we have to define stock now is, is bounding box. Well, other than importing from an existing file or doing a selection on screen. If you model a piece of stock yourself, you can go ahead and select it. Uh, if, you're, if you've modeled it in another software and saved it, you can go ahead and reference that file. But as far as defining a shape and size the way we used to do it, those have now changed and we're doing everything within the bounding box uh, menu. Now this is a familiar menu. We've done bounding box work lots in previous versions of Mastercam. So we've only got a few options here as far as selecting and defining shapes and sizes. Now going and selecting something in the graphic screen is pretty straightforward. You're in menu selection, click the selection icon, select whatever it is you want to be uh, represented in this, this bounding box shape. It can be a model, um, solids, it can be wireframe, uh, whatever you need. Now as, def as far as defining shapes and sizes without doing a selection, uh, you can do that. Just make sure you don't pick anything and you can anchor your stock and start setting sizes like so inside of the uh, rectangular settings. You'll have to be aware that your origin settings here will be reflective of the active WCS. So if you want to anchor to something else on your model, you'll have to find different ways to go about that uh, uh, selection and distribution of the bounding box. Always keep in mind, you can still come out and do push pulls on bounding boxes, just like we've been able to do before. So that's another useful way to define stock models if you need. And what I'm gonna do here is just select my model and anchor to the bottom and add a little bit extra stock on top. And I'm good with that. So I'm going to head and click. Okay. Now another big change on this stock setup page is this guy right here, stock plane transformation. I'm going to come back to this one in our next demo part. But uh, if you are someone who works with custom planes, as in you're not using the default top, front, back, bottom, uh, left, right, then you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to that section because it's uh, something very 
tricky is going on there that you're going to want to know about before you get into any master cam files. So uh, you might need to fast forward if you're a little bit bored right now, but custom planes are definitely different right now in 23. Carrying on down our menu here, uh, fixture or work holding, self-explanatory. Do you have fixtures? Check the box, yes, and then go ahead and either select them or import them from external files. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna add mine from a level. And since I'm using number 200 here, the vice at world, I'll select that. And the same thing that we had up on our, our master model page, we've got this uh, coloring selection so we can tell what we've picked as a fixture and what we haven't. Next, we'll head down to the tools page. Again, this is where you can pick how you do want to define your speeds and feeds. Are you going from the tool and manually uh, plugging in your speeds and feeds? Or do you want to use from material calculations? And then lastly, our, our machine itself, which we talked about. And again, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I've selected a machine. I've selected fixtures. I've selected stock. Uh, but as I go into my simulation options here, you'll see that um, none of that has carried over. So that's what I was talking about previous, where I think the intention is eventually that all those settings you make in the machine group setup will either populate out into this simulator options or this simulator options page will uh, eventually disappear and all the settings will be made within uh, the machine group setup. Um, so just guessing right now. So currently you need to go back and redefine all that stuff that you just did in order for this stuff to come through in a machine simulation, in a verify, um, etc. Okay, so that was our basic part on default top setting. Let's go ahead now and switch over to the other one, which is the part at a custom plane. Okay, so I've got my custom plane defined here. You can see I'm on side of my part. And if we do a quick reference to where top is, you can see Top's uh, Z origin is completely different. And as far as uh, origins themselves, uh, they aren't together. So I'm using a complete custom orientation and origin for this custom plane of this imported part. And I'll go ahead and hop into a new machine group and we'll kind of start fresh here with this, this new setup. So currently the machines are coming in a little bit upside down. I'm assuming again, this is something that'll get fixed so that the active WCS, when you hop into a machine group setup, it will align the machine to the active WCS. So things don't look all out of sorts when you first hop in. And everything else is gonna be done exactly the same. Master model, um, we'll come back to stock setup in a minute. Uh, work holding, tools, and simulation machine selection. But again, the big difference here, let me hop into our bounding box. This is where you need to be a little bit careful here in your stock setup. So if we use the same process we did before, we'll hop into bounding box, select the model, Let's do manual selection, select the model and selection. You can see the, uh, the, the model right now is currently out of sorts. It's not aligned with our parts. Let me exit out of this and go back one step. And this is where we need to get into our stock plane transformation. Now, this is the same as it used to be in the old master cam. You know, if you had a part at a custom location, you had to use that custom locations plane. And that way you could define stock uh, referencing that view, if you want to call it uh, that method. So from our stock plane transformation, I'll come in and select our custom plane. This is the custom WCS I made. You can see it on screen here. We'll delete the existing stock model and we'll go back into our bounding box and redefine. Do manual selection, select a part and selection. Everything looks good like it did before. I'll do the same thing. I'll add an extra bit of stock on top. Okay, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and green check. And for some reason, my stock is now out of shape. This is the thing you need to know about uh, the current condition of 23's stock setup. Now this stock here, let me go ahead and green check it just to show that it is in fact out of place. We'll turn this display on. You can see my stock is now uh, not connected to my my part anymore. So what's going on right now is the distance that your custom planes origin is away from world origin, the stock is getting shifted away by that much. So to fix it, you basically have to zero these out. However, if I do zero these out, notice the stock is now aligned. However, 
my plane, my custom plane has been moved. So what you need to do right now in 23, if you're using a part on a custom plane, is you need to make two planes. One plane for machining, one plane for stock setup. So this custom plane, I'm gonna call this stock plane, custom plane stock. Let me just expand this so we can see the naming. So custom plane stock, and I'll make the second plane over here. We'll call the custom plane toolpath. Now this custom plane toolpath is the same initial plane that I made. Um, so typically what I'm gonna suggest is the workflow here is make your your custom plane like you normally would, origin on the part as you want it to be. I would then duplicate that plane. I would edit the name of that to, uh, that plane to say stock. And just for demo, I'm gonna uh, put a number two here. And with that duplicated plane, I would now move its location to zero. And now this custom plane, this custom stock plane you can use inside of your bounding box as your stock plane transformation. So bounding box, we'll come in here, we'll select our duplicated plane. Let's get rid of this model here, do a bounding box selection again, manual this piece and selection. Let's add that extra bit of stock. Hit OK. Notice it didn't shift out of position. Green check. Notice the stock is still in the correct position. And our planes, our toolpath plane is still good as far as making toolpaths that reference the correct location on the model. Okay, so that's the current workflow you're going to need to use if you're using a part in uh, that's using a custom plane. One other thing to know about, uh, this is especially for uh, newer users, uh, teachers, those using wireframe geometry parts. Let me go into a top view and let me just do a quick little sketch. So for an example, you might have a part that is completely wireframe geometry. When you hop into your stock setup and specifically onto the stock setup page, notice my wireframe has just disappeared. Um, there's a checkbox you need to check and that's this guy right here, show wireframe entities. You need to make sure that you have that turned on if the geometry that you want to work with or the only geometry that you have is wireframe geometry. So if you hop into this and your part disappears and you're not sure why, uh, that's the checkbox you need to look out for. Okay, so I think I've covered everything within the machine group setup. Actually, there's one thing I didn't mention I think I breezed over it, and that is the material selection. So if you're doing a tool speeds and feeds calculation from material, the material that you select in your master model needs to match that within this material group here. And that way you'll get the correct speeds and feeds and no errors thrown at you when you get into your tool path creation. So again, if you're doing from material speeds and feeds calculation, use this material option icon out here to get into and select and or edit those values for that material. But it must also match the master model stock uh, setting for material in there as well. Now again, these things may change in the next update, some things might get hooked up. So we're not making uh, double settings within the machine group and then out in the simulator options as well. Uh, that stock setup for custom planes may change as well. If it does change, I'll make a second video going through the changes and different workflow. But for now, uh, this video stands as the way the new machine group interface works.